It's been a little over two years since I launched the open source response time tool. It's been amazing so far and I have loads more work on the way that I'm really excited to share. First though, I thought I would recap what's happened over the last two and a bit years. It took me six months to get the first version of the tool to somewhat usable, somewhat ready. It was based on the design of, from uh, Eric from Aperture uh, which he showed in his excellent video that I still highly recommend you go and watch. Basically, a Malexus MLX75305 and an Adafruit M4 board. I added a few things to the design, like a voltage clamp circuit, and since the sensor was powered by 5 volts on the USB bus, which can be pretty noisy, a voltage monitor and filter. I designed a 3D printed case that's far too over engineered for what it's really worth, uh, and I designed a PCB and then started building and selling units. The software was by far the largest time sink. The data processing is hundreds of lines of code. In fact, the whole data processing file is now nearly 2,000 lines of code, all to convert data like this into numbers and heat maps like this. Turns out that can be complicated and you need to handle edge cases like strobing monitor backlights. Ah, uh, that was fun. Now, uh, the first version of the software was pretty basic. I viewed it very much as open source, as in I expected other people to want to build on top of it, to build their own units. But as I added more, my, my view sort of changed to this is a product that people want to buy and have just work. That means adding a load of new features, the biggest of which I think was the results view window. In here you can view both the raw data in interactive graphs and a full set of heat maps, all of which can be saved as images for publication. This was probably the best addition I've made in terms of making the whole tool feel a lot more like a proper tool and not a bodged together DIY project. I've since added support for the new input lag -like testing mode data too. Now, after getting over the initial rush of people wanting to buy pre-built OSRTT units, I started to design a new and easier to use version of the tool. I wanted to get rid of the pesky brightness limitation of the MLX75305 sensor, which is around 160 nits or so, and it really needs to be at that point, no higher, no lower. So I designed my own sensor package. I'm actually really proud of this. I knew I wanted to have a really wide range uh, for brightness, which meant changing how much amplification the amplifier does to the signal from the five photodiodes on the bottom. I tried using a digital potentiometer, but the ones that offer high enough resistance for what I need are few and far between and are far, far too inaccurate. So I designed my own. It's made up of eight high precision resistors and an octal switch chip. Basically, the chip can bypass any of the eight resistors in any combination I want, therefore changing the gain on the amplifier. It's pretty beautiful. Now, I did run into a bit of a problem, which is that little octal switch is actually a really annoying package to solder to the, the PCBs. I hand build every unit, so having this absolutely tiny 28 pin chip with all of those pins tucked under itself just fail to connect to some of those pins means that the board needs repairing to work properly. My success rate for building the pro units has been about 50% on a good day, as in the other 50% need the chip taken off, cleaned and then re-soldered. I got pretty annoyed with that process, so I redesigned the Pro again to use a slightly larger but more conventional footprint chip instead. These solder first time, which makes life so much easier for me. Of course, if you want one of these new units, you can pick them up at osrtt.com. I actually have some stock available, at least at the time of filming, so be quick. To be clear though, the old Pro design with the standard or the, the sort of square uh, chip is functionally the same, they perform the same, the only difference is the ease of manufacturing for me. I've honestly been blown away by the reception to the OSRTT project. I've shipped units all across the world to major media like Wirecutter, CNN Underscored, Linus, Kitguru, Tech Testers and a load more, and major companies like Sony, Nvidia and AOC have all bought units too. Even a movie studio in Hollywood, Magnopus, who are using it for latency testing on their live stages. 
I've had messages from media, especially in Asia, who are using the tool to help push back the, as they describe it, corrupt media and corporate relationships that appear to be pretty common. Of course, with the larger reception, that does bring with it people who will find every single bug in your code. I've worked incredibly hard to make sure that the tool is stable and reliable. I've fixed almost every bug that people have reported, normally within a week or two as well, which I'm very happy with. There are still a couple of things that I'm sort of banging my head against the wall with, mostly with Windows scaling, which seems to be interfering with the desktop app, and people who use non-standard keyboard layouts, those also are a bit frustrating, but I am chipping away at both of those in due time. If anyone has any experience with .NET and WinForms development and can help with the Windows scaling issue, please do jump in on GitHub, that's linked in the description as well. For the most part, I think that brings us to now, which means it's time to talk about what's on the horizon. Far, far off in the distance is a latency specific tool. I've had so many requests to make a somewhat generic, i.e. non-monitor specific tool, that I think I'm gonna do it. Basically the same as NVIDIA's LDAT in terms of inputs, i.e. simulated mouse clicks, sound, and switched inputs. That's still a while away though, especially because I think I'll have to make a new desktop app too. I can reuse things like the processing functions, of course, but something more latency specific would definitely be better. But much, much closer on the horizon though, is something that is completely free and makes all the data the OSRT project creates accessible to everyone. It's a new site called the Response Times Database. It's not quite ready just yet, but it is very close. It's pretty much what it says on the tin. It's a database of monitors that you can search and filter to see how they perform. You'll have full heat maps, the cliff notes results, and comparison graphs, and there's so much more that I want to do with this. We're getting the sort of basic version live as soon as possible, and then we'll be adding a load more features. But if you have any suggestions for what you would like to see, I would love to hear them in the comments below. The whole project is about making all this sort of stuff more open, transpar transparent, and available, and I think this site is the next step in that goal. When it is live, you will find it at responsetimes.net. I genuinely can't wait to get this live. So that is a recap of, uh, well, a very brief recap of the last like two and a half, almost three years at this point, if you include the original development time, um, and the response time tool project. Uh, it's been an absolute blast, and like I said, I've got way more to come still too, so of course make sure you check out the links and subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Um, if you want to support the project, but you don't necessarily need a response time tool, you can just support directly through things like using affiliate links in the description, or monetarily through YouTube, Patreon, there's a donation link in the description uh, and a load of other stuff you can check out including hoodies or t-shirts like this one uh, that I've also designed myself. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it. If you want to check out more videos, including more detail on things like what the new input, input lag mode is like, looking at the heat maps and graphs or the, the results view functions, uh, then there are a load of other videos already on the channel you can check out. You can also check out more about the uh, hardware design and things like that in those videos, again, on the channel. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.